afternoon. Thanks so much for hopping on with us. I'm Diana Piper. I'm the Director of Admissions here at the Pathway School. If this is your first time watching us either live or in a replay, let us know where you're coming from and what brought you to us. Drop things in the comments throughout the entire discussion. If you have questions, drop those in the comments as well. We have a wonderful colleague here monitoring those and we're happy to answer questions and talk more about things that you want to know about. I am joined here today with one of my favorite people, Katie Purcell is our special education supervisor and she has a lot of hats here at the Pathway School and one of the things I wanted to do was ask her to join and talk to us a little bit about extended school year program. So I'm going to hand it over to Katie to introduce herself, tell me a little bit about what brought her to Pathway and her passion for the, what, the work that we do and then she's going to share a little bit of information that is going to be really important for you so stay tuned. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, my name is Katie Purcell, like Diana said. I'm a supervisor of special ed at Pathway. Um, I started in 2015 as a teacher in our upper school program. Um, and then in 2018, got a new role um, in the organization um, as a supervisor of special ed. So I attend all the IEP meetings. I oversee the IEP process, um, supports and services and such and am very much involved in the decision on whether students are eligible or not for ESY. Um, I can talk a little bit about what got me here, um, I guess. So I, before Pathway, I taught for about 10 years in emotional support programs throughout the area. Um, and yeah, so in 2015, I had a friend who did an internship at Pathway. They really loved it. Um, I was trying to find my fit in, in education, just as a lot of our kids are. Um, so I think I was in like maybe eight different districts before I got here to Pathway. But I, I like that because I can relate to the kids. That a lot of them have jumped to some schools before us and then kind of found their home here. So I feel like I'm in this, a similar boat. Um, we can jump, I guess, ESY yeah. now. So during the IEP meetings, uh, we'll talk about what's called regression and recoupment. Um, so if, usually we use the Christmas break because that's an extended break, um, but if you're, if a student is performing at a certain level in December, and then um, they go out for winter break and they come back a few weeks later, then we, we see where they are then, um, a lot of our students will have regressed just a little bit uh, because they didn't have access to instruction in reading and math, social skills, things like that. So usually if that occurs, uh, we know that they're probably a good candidate for ESY, um, which a lot of our students are. Um, we want to make sure that the exposure to instruction, reading, math, social skills primarily um, is available to them at least for that six weeks throughout the summer break. Um, so that they don't lose too much skills and then when they come back to kick off their new school year um, They're right where they left off in June. So that's really the goal to, to maintain those skills Excellent, so it is important for us We do appreciate and certainly value the time the kids have off during those breaks And we want all of our students to enjoy time with their family and have fun and do the things that they should be doing during those breaks but as Katie has said we do want to also monitor and make sure that their ability to get back to the place where they were prior to that break is not interrupted too much because then we have to backtrack and reteach things and get them back up to speed before we can continue to make progress. So that's one of the reasons it's really important for us to look at that regression recoupment data. It is certainly sometimes a focus on just the academic pieces of things, but we believe very strongly that that social emotional component is also really important because many students are struggling to access their education because some of those negative feelings and emotions that they're having or their social skills that really interfere with uh, being able to attend and, and access their education are the things that also impact regression. So it's important for us to look at all of those things to make sure that we're making responsible decisions. There are certainly opportunities for kids to participate in a variety of things over the summer and we want to make sure that we're giving them some good opportunities to stay fresh, 
get some rest and recover from that rigorous school year, but also be able to jump right back into things in the fall when the school year begins again. So those are yeah, really important point. factors. That's a great point. And I, I, I didn't think of that, but a lot of our students sometimes just the routine Mm -hmm. um, of, of continuing to get up for school and, and you know it's not just receiving the instruction but the consistency um, that they require um, so that they don't have big setbacks yeah mm -hmm. and because it's summer we do do fun things um, which I think you know a lot of ESY programs do so we, we try to have a balance of academics instruction and um, clubs um, and fun th and, and our older students will work um, a lot of times in the summer, the work opportunities will be increased um, just because there's more time in the day. Because um, we don't get social studies and science, it's mostly math, reading, and social skills here at Pathway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are great points. And I think that, and, and if you've joined us before, you've heard me say this before, we sneak some learning in in some really creative ways. So kids are having so much fun, they don't realize when they're learning, and that's what Katie was talking about in those fun summer clubs and things that we have and, and to a large extent even in our careers program on and off campus. Students are engaged in what they're doing. They're having so much fun with an activity that they're enjoying. They don't realize that they're also really practicing and building their abilities to collaborate with somebody that they're working on something with or communicate effectively and share their ideas verbally and work through things and problem solve, all of those things that we all know are incredibly helpful and necessary for kids to develop skills. So we, we fine tune those things into what we're doing during the summer in a way that kids are having fun. They don't realize that these are also things that they're practicing and generalizing and making sure that they're building and continuing to move forward with. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that could be fun to show the student the data. And they're like, what, you were taking data on me? Yeah, Absolutely. look how good you did, you know, Absolutely. so um, that's always good. Yeah. And we do, at the end of the year, obviously, we have our progress reports, um, and we show data on IEP goals, and then in the first marking period, which ends in about November, we compare that data to the June data. So, no, you know, in, in those summer months and then a little bit of the school year, how, how have you done? And we do see across the board um, that the students that attend ESY do much better with their progress. Um, students that don't, a lot of students that don't may have some regression that first part period or maintain skills, but we do definitely see in our data uh, that students that attend can keep on progressing. Yeah, that's an important factor to consider for sure. Yeah, great. Devin, have we had any questions or things that have come in that we should address? Yeah, so um, what fun programs do the kids get involved in during the summer? You want to talk a little bit about some of the clubs that we've done yeah. in the past? Yeah, um, they change a little bit year to year, but um, in the past few years we've had um, sports, cooking, coding, e-games, uh, fashion design, um, some gardening, horticulture club. There's a general technology club which has robotics, we had last year a really interesting club, Hashtag Adulting. Talk a little bit more about that one. That was kind of interesting. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah, and I think um, it ended up being a success. I wouldn't be surprised if that was offered this year as well. Um, but Adulting was geared for students 18 and older, and really for students that are trying to find employment in their communities, work on their resume, their interview skills. They had mock interviews. So it was really... Um, around employment and also some independent living um, in there too. I know that they went out in the community um, to practice, you know, making purchases and being independent in the community too. Mm -hmm. So it's just about being an adult and preparation for that. Yeah. So we certainly ask kids to think about what things they might be interested in from those list of clubs. So we're in the process of developing that for our ESY 2022 program and our current families and those who are joining us will get a list of those club options so they can think about what they like. We certainly can't put everybody in their first selection of a club because sometimes those get full, but we do everything we can to match those uh, interests to what they're participating in. Sometimes that opportunity to participate in my second or third choice club 
is a great time for us to help kids build the opportunity to be a flexible student and maybe try things that they might not think they like, which are again, really helpful and important skills lifelong for all kids to persevere through things that they might not be as highly interested in in some other opportunities. So we, we try to do our best to match their interests and want to give them different experiences. So sometimes it's great to encourage a student to try something they've never tried before or think that they wouldn't like because you don't know what you like or don't like until you've had some experience with it. So it's important to put your feet in the water a little bit, see what happens. If you try it and you absolutely don't like it, there's plenty of folks around who can talk to you about what can I change into and swap out instead if that's a possibility. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, fine. Great. Another question. Um, <coughs> are Pathways Clinical and Behavioral Team uh, still working with students during the summer? As IEPs uh, certainly provide those services, we are going to provide those related services in the summer as well. All of our related service professionals are, are available to all of our students if they need that type of support. So clinical behavioral support is certainly still provided to students, both who are IEP for it or as things come up and as, as needed. Those are certainly still provided by our team. Am I oh, yeah. describing that? Yeah, and just to add on, our related services are, are available all summer. So if you have speech or occupational therapy, even vision or hearing, um, if you receive reading support, all those services continue um, throughout the summer with the same idea in mind. You know, exposure to instruction uh, will continue, you'll continue to progress in your goals instead of um, taking a few months off and then having to catch up. Well, if we don't have any other questions, I will encourage you to keep questions coming. If you're watching this in a replay and you have questions, don't hesitate to put those down in the comments. We're happy to reach out to you and provide some answers or maybe get in touch with you. You're invited to call us at any moment with additional questions or things you want to talk about. As always, if you know folks who you think that this presentation and this Facebook Live could be meaningful for. I strongly encourage you to share this with others so that they can learn about opportunities that we have. The goal is making sure that if we can provide the appropriate services for kids and be the right fit, that we will allow that opportunity. So we're certainly up, uh, open to hearing from folks who might have some questions to help us learn how we can support you. Thanks so much for hopping on and joining us, and we'll see you next month. Bye.